we want to talk about work. Josh, one of the difficulties in this unit in particular is the words that we use to describe physics concepts are very different from their English meaning. Paul, if you tell me you're doing work, what you mean is you're getting tired. And in physics, work has nothing to do with tiredness. There is a concept that has to do with tiredness, spoiler alert, power. If you're generating more power, you're going to get tired faster. But if you're doing work, that doesn't mean you're necessarily getting tired. So one of the challenges, Alex, is going to be I have to get you to rec split your brain between the English definition of the word that you're used to and the specific physics definition. So in physics, you do work on an object. You don't just do work on your own, you do work on something. And when you're doing work on an object, Diego, and we'll put this in the notes later, you don't need to write this down, you're actually changing the object's energy state. You're giving it, or taking away from it, energy. And we're going to talk a lot about energy in this unit. Uh, for work to be done on an object, two things have to happen. Number one, a force must act on the object. Does that mean Mr. Duick, F equals what, what? And this is a job for a free body diagram, and muta that's all still fair game. And number two, the object must move through a distance, but there's a restriction in the same direction as the force. So what does that mean? Work is calculated by force times distance. But the force and the distance have to be in the same direction. The force and the distance have to be in the same direction. Can you find that on your formula sheet just so you know where it is? It should be just beneath the conservation of momentum laws, I think. I'll... Yes? Yeah. Okay. One of the really nice things, Lily, about work and energy is they are scalars. So we're not going to worry about north, south, east, west. We sometimes have negative and positive, but that's not going to mean a direction. That's going to mean an energy loss or an energy gain. But it's not going to be like, which way are you going? Because they're scalars, they're really useful for analyzing objects that move in curvy paths, like roller coasters, if you look at them from the side. What are the units for work? Well, Aryan, what are the units for force? What are the units for distance? And so work is measured in Newton meters. Except it's such an important concept, we've taken the Newton meter and we've given that a special name. This is the Joule, capital J, and if you're wondering how to spell it, it's J-O-U-L-E, named after a scientist whose last name was Joule. Work is measured in joules. By the way, energy is also measured in joules, and so you're going to find work and energy are very, very, very related. One other note about work equals, well, first of all, oh, who will I pick on this time? Let's pick on Josh. Work equals what times what? Force times distance. Work equals what times what? The restrictions. Number one, force and the distance have to be in the same direction. Uh, number two, the force in this equation has to be constant. The force in this equation has to be constant. Bryce, eventually you're going to actually learn three definitions of work. Force times distance is the easiest. It's also the least useful because you can only use it when the force is constant and everything is in the same direction. There are more complicated ones and we'll look at them. But no pun intended. They're more work, like more writing. I like example one. I like example one. Example one is a nice question. How much work does it take to lift a 12 kilogram mass from the ground to a height of 9.5 meters? I'm going to dive deep into this question because I have to be nitpicky because I'm a nerd. But then, Ella, we're going to simplify it dramatically. You may even choose to add an extra equation to your green sheet. I don't know. Ella, what's this question asking me to find? How much what? Okay. Can all of you please underline the word lift? That's a bit of a trigger phrase for this specific question, and you'll see why as the unit progresses. What does it want me to find, Ella? Josh, work is what times what? 
So I'm going to argue, I guess, the work done by lifting is the force involved in lifting times distance. The problem is, I don't know what the lifting force is. You know what, Ella? This is a job for a free body diagram. So over here in the margin, represent the mass with a dot. If you were lifting something, what would the forces be acting on it? Get the obvious one. Yeah. What else? I think F lift. Upwards. Let's assume you're doing the minimum, the bare minimum. You're lifting it at a constant speed. You're not accelerating it. So I think F lift would be the same arrow length as gravity. You okay with that? Forces would be, I'm looking for where it starts letter B. Yeah, okay. So you ready? We're going to start this question over, but with that information in the back of our mind. This is not to make fun of you, it's to make I reinforce the point. What's this question asking me to find? What word did I underline? So work is what times what? So work lifting is force lifting. I don't know force lifting. Oh, but look, 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 look. I know the force that has to be the same size as the lifting force. Which one? Yeah. And the reason I'm being fussy is mg is not in the same direction as the distance that you're lifting. And I said force and distance have to be in the same direction. So I'm not saying that the work done in lifting is gravity times the distance. I'm saying it just so happens the lifting force is the same size. The work done by lifting is going to be equal to mg. And then we do something else. For a vertical distance in a scalar, we call that a height. So we call it mgh. That's the work done in lifting. If you look at your formula sheet, you may see an mgh on your formula sheet, mm -hmm. but it doesn't say w next to it. What does it say? which stands for potential energy. I'm telling you that work and energy are very related, and we'll get to that. But if you want to, you could add work lift equals MGH to your green sheet. You could add W lift equals MGH to your green sheet. And you'll probably just end up internalizing it. It's up to you, but you can. Let's crunch the numbers. Uh, Ella, what was the mass? G, you know this. And because, good, we're scalar, so we're not going to put the negative in. We're not going to worry about up or down, just positive 9.8 as a magnitude. And what was the height? Good. What do you get? Uh, sorry? I'm going to call it 1,120. I'll go to three sig figs. What are the units for work? Newton meters, except we've given that a name. Joule. How much work is that? Well, 12 kilograms, bowling ball, heavy bowling ball. Uh, 9.5 meters, about three stories. Could all of you carry a heavy bowling ball up three flights of stairs? Yes. Would it tire you? Work is not tiredness. You know what would tire you, Riley? If you sprinted up the stairs with the bowling ball versus slowly taking rests and breaks and step. You still do the same amount of work in both situations, but you do one faster. Tiredness is how fast you do work. It's not work. Is that okay? Can you cross out the word coal? We're going to put the word Bryce right there. Bryce pushes against a brick wall as hard as he can for 12 seconds. Bryce, can you stand up, please? Oh, behind you, look where I'm pointing, kiddo. There's kind of an empty spot on the wall beneath that purple-pink poster. Push as hard as you can for 12 seconds. One, quick, come on, two, three, keep going, push. Four, five, keep going, six, push harder. Seven, eight, really hard now. Nine, 10, 11, give it hard. 12. Stop. Was he getting tired? Yeah, that's because he, that's not what we're talking about. Did he do any work on the wall? Did he apply a force? Did the wall move a distance? So how many joules of work did he do? He may have been getting tired, but tiredness is not work. Work is when you move an object by applying a force through a distance. Next page. 
Example 3, pushing a box along the floor requires a steady force of 22.5. If you push it for 13.6 meters, how much work have you done? Emily, what's this question asking me to find? How much what? Josh, work is what times what? <laughs> All right. Um, uh, double check, is the force constant? It says steady. And just reading this, it seems as though the force and the distance are in the same direction. When wouldn't it be? It'll be pretty obvious. So I think we can just plug and chug, Emily. It's going to be 22.5 times 13.6, which is what? 306 even? Yeah, 306 even? And then uh, joules. Believe it or not, example four explains the pyramids. It explains any ancient construction. And it explains most of our modern engineering today, riding a bike up a hill. Really? Yes. You ready, Paul? OK. Dylan pedals his bike up a 19 meter high hill that is 91.4 meters long. The combined mass of the bike and the rider is 65 kilograms, and the bike requires a steady force to continue up the hill. How much work does it take to get to the top of the hill? Well, when you ride up a hill, what force are you doing work against? Yeah, gravity. What direction is gravity? It's vertical, not slanty like a ramp. And so, Riley, can you read part A to me, please? Pause. What if he climbed this? Well, believe it or not, that's going to be the same amount of work as going up the ramp. Because in both situations, you're doing work against which force? Okay? So, in other words, I'm going to argue that going up a ramp, that's the same as calculating how much work to lift yourself up. Ooh, who remembers what was the work done in lifting? It was uh, MGH, is that right? Is that right? Is that right? I think so. This is how much work it's going to take Dylan to get up the hill. Because when you go up a hill, Madison, which force are you doing work against? So you're lifting, okay? Riley, what's the mass? G, 9.8. What's the height? 19, because that's the distance that's in the same direction as the force that we're talking about, not 91.4. Can you give it to me, uh, all the digits, Riley? Don't round off. Jewels of work. Okay? You're stuck with that. That's how much work it's going to take Dylan to increase his height by 19 meters. So B says, how much work will Dylan do riding his bike up the hill? 12,103 joules. But what's a little more interesting is part C. Part C says, using your answer from A, calculate the force that Dylan needs to pedal with in part B. Ooh, Alex, what's C wanted me to find? What did we find in part B? There isn't by chance an equation that has work and force in it, is there? OK. Alex, get the force by itself. Yep, here's yet another way to find force. Not going to memorize it. Alex, how much work did Dylan do? 12,000. And then now, we're calculating the force you need to pedal up the hill. So that's going to be the force that's in the same direction as the hill. So we better use the distance that's in the same direction as the hill, which is which distance? Ninety-one point four. Sorry. 
Alex, what do you get? Okay, can you do me a 132 plus change newtons? Can you do me a favor? Can you go mg on your calculator? Dylan's mass, which was 65 times 9.8. Can you all do that on your calculator, please? 65 times 9.8, what do you get? Casey, let me know what you get when you answer. Casey, let me know what you get when you answer. 637? Let's call it 640. If Dylan wants to hand over hand, he has to be able to exert 640 newtons. That's the shortest way to do this amount of work. What if he can't exert 640 newtons? He's still stuck with doing 12,103 joules of work. He can increase the distance. And the shallower he makes that ramp, the longer the distance involved, but the smaller force required to pedal the bike. This is how we built the pyramids. This is how we built ancient constructions. We used ramps. Put your pencils down, look up. We talk in physics or in engineering about what are called simple machines. There's seven of them. There's the, uh, let me, ah, uh, blanking out. There's the uh, screw. There is the wedge. There is the lever. There is the ramp. There's several, uh, a pulley is one, and there's a couple more I can't remember. So let's suppose we are building pyramids, and we need to move a massive block, and we need to move this massive block up. But it's so heavy, we can't go MG. We cannot do that. Well, what we can do is build a huge ramp. Because we're stuck doing this much work, but if we can make that number bigger by increasing the slanty distance, we can make this number smaller. There. That's how we were able to move stuff before we had fancy spanchy mecha mechanical machines. That's how we moved stuff with human muscle. We used brain power. Simple machines. Revolutionized the world right there, the concept of work. This is one of the nice characteristics, turn the page, about work. It's a scalar. What that means is it does not care about the intervening path that you took. Work doesn't care whether Dylan went like this or whether Dylan went like this or even whether Dylan went like this. All it cares about is where'd you start? On the ground, where'd you end up? 19 meters high. What force were you doing work against? Starts with letter G. Gravity, well, then it's MGH no matter what. I don't care how you got there. And so, Sarah Ashley, is it still 19 meters of height in this picture here? Then you know what? It's still 12,103 joules of work. And now, Sarah Ashley, you're probably noticing from the side, this is why work and energy are useful for analyzing roller coasters, because that's already starting to look a little bit like a roller coaster from the side. Work is what times what? Force and distance have to be in the same direction. Force has to be constant. But just from that already, we can say, oh, uh, how many of you ever used a screwdriver before? Okay. If you try turning the screw with your fingers, the circumference of the circle that you're trying to make is really tiny. It's a small distance you're turning it through. All a screwdriver does, it gives you a thicker handle. It increases the distance that you're rotating, so you need a smaller force to turn the screw. Same amount of work, but increase the distance, smaller force. It's also what a wrench does, for that matter. It increases the distance of the arc that you're moving through. Then you need a smaller force to turn that bolt or screw. We use this everywhere. Hey, what takes more work? Lifting a 25 kilogram mass to a height of four meters or lifting a 50 kilogram sack to a height of two meters? Or is it a trick question? What? You think they would end up being the same? Half the mass to twice the height is the same as the whole mass to half the height? Yeah, and if you go MGH, they are the same. Good. I don't just think they're the same. I know they're the same. What if the force isn't constant? What if it's changing? I told you, Bryce, that we're going to get three definitions of work. The first one is work equals what times what? Force times... Yep. 
The second one and the third one are yakir. The second one we're going to look at tomorrow. We're going to pause here. However, some of you have already finished all the momentum stuff. If you want to get a head start, I am going to assign more homework tomorrow, but you're already capable of doing number one, number two, number three, number four. Oh, no, sorry, you can skip number four. Skip number four. Ha, 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 ha. Five is good. Six is good. You can put a star next to seven. I haven't talked about it yet, but if you're clever, you might have the aha moment. Your hint for number seven is it may involve a free body diagram. Okay. So let me hit pause here.